Communications and former Chief of Staff for Senator Maria Cantwell. And Matt Schlapp is Chairman of the American Conservative Union, amongst many other things that both gentlemen have, all, have done in their careers. Uh, Michael, if I could start with you, do you think there's a chance uh, that the Democrats could come along, especially if they add some sort of millionaire's tax to it? Oh, for sure there's a chance. I mean, there's there's so many things that happen in a once-in-a-generation tax code change. It's been 31 years. But but they're, they're the things that, that are concerned about the proposals that are on the table now, is it blows out the deficit. There's no way to pay for half of the stuff. And there are some things that are very unattractive to people who are trying to save for retirement, like the 401k rollback stuff. So clearly there's room to negotiate, but they've got to bring people to the table and allow them to negotiate. So we don't know exactly what happened in that luncheon yet, Matt, where um, apparently the cat's got their tongue, nobody's talking as they leave that luncheon, so right. they're all on the same page for at least oh, the next hour or so. Um, what do you make of how they're looking right now? Do you see momentum, or are you worried about some roadblocks ahead? Yeah, I, I'm definitely worried. Uh, it's been a, a long year where Congress has not gotten many of the big things accomplished, and I think failure to get a tax plan through would be a huge mistake. I think every Republican ought to be voting for this for sure, and I think these smart Democrats from reddish states would be smart to take a very hard look and vote for this as well. I think it meant a lot that the president went to the Hill. Dana, you understand this. That is a sign of respect across Pennsylvania Avenue to come to them. Actually, and Matt, we have a press conference there. Let's bring back our policy panel, Mike Meehan and Matt Schlapp. Um, while he was talking, the uh, senator of interest of, for several of the questions there also made some comments. Let's listen to those. I normally don't uh, on policy, um, but you, you ought to talk to other people with all that's been said and probably get a, whatever I would say about it might be, um, you know, slanted off in a direction. Let's, let me ask you a more policy specific question then. Yeah. Do you think the president's appearance here today will be helpful in passing tax reform? A tax reform barely came up. So, yeah. What was the time? No, 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 no. What did the president discuss then? Well, really, talk to other senators. You know, y'all have given me so much <laughs> time today. I appreciate you that really so much. You really actually have a call. Nothing on health care? The cameras at your office. Okay, Matt, so the, the press is very interested in the process story. Um, <clears throat> and I think they missed a real opportunity to press Mitch McConnell on some of these potential roadblocks, on some of the specific things, yeah. because conservatives have long considered uh, that the growth of the government is a problem, that you've got to figure out how to pay for these things. But the way things look right now, it's like they're basically abandoning some of those principles. But I think you have a good point where you talk about the cuts will actually get you to the growth that you need to deal with that. Have the economics changed? Yeah, Dana, I do think there's some division with maybe even some conservatives on the idea of paying for tax cuts. And certainly, as chairman of the American Conservative Union, I have a whole different idea. I don't like the idea of raising taxes in order to pay for taxes. So you have some tax cuts in this package that are going to be offset with some removal of deductions or some tax increases. And so I like the idea that this uh, plan does, uh, uh, does rest on the idea of dynamic scoring and that revenues increase when we have the right regulatory and tax policy. I just won't be a voice to call for it to be completely paid for. I'd like to see as much pro-growth tax cuts as possible because I think we're in a unique position. After eight years of what I considered a fairly uh, anti-business and radical Obama regulatory and tax environment, we, our economy could really explode and the people who will benefit from that are these working uh, middle class, uh, the Americans that go to work and work very hard and they have not their incomes go up. They're the ones who are going to be the beneficiary, and that's where my party should stand. Michael, do you think that the Democrats enjoy uh, the Republican infighting when you see President Trump and Senator Corker battling it out this morning? Do, does that actually please them? Well, you do have to laugh at that, that, that a year ago you would have thought this was a Democrat-Republican spat going on between the battle between Corker and Trump, uh, between the Twitter and whatnot. But, but the reality is this is a big policy initiative being debated here. And, and the question is all on the Republican side of the table. Do you want a deficit spend in order to give 80 percent of the tax benefit cuts to about 5 percent of the, right, Michael, uh, the top? Michael, as a matter so. of fact, we have Senate Democrats coming to the microphones now. So you never know what's going to happen on the daily briefing.